Hey Scruffy, how you doing? Ready for dinner? Okay, there was a really quiet meow. Another really quiet meow. And it's a yawn. Well, he's made more noise than he did last night. He was completely silent last night. Okay, well, I have new... Actually, not new cat food. It's cat food you've seen before, but it's a new can. So I have the meaty pate with... Oh no, it's meaty. It's the super supper. So it's the mystery meat one with uh, your Kirkland kibble. I uh, overfilled the Kirkland container, so I figured I better try to empty it a little so I didn't put any meow mix in there tonight. So you ready for food? Yeah? No? Mm. Well, I'm going to bring it out. Okay, so I'm going to pick up the plate now and open the door. Oops. Okay, coming on out. Try not to hiss. Grabbing the water now. Okay, so I'm gonna. Change your water. And put the new water in. Okay. And I'm going to sit down now in the chair and get the glove on. And you're fast. So it was another very warm, actually I'd probably say hot day today. So I think it was, yeah, it was hotter than yesterday. So this is very summer-like weather, even though it's just the beginning of spring. So I decided to recovery day today so I stayed indoors it's actually not the full story but that's what happened so yeah the heat starting to get to me it's kind of uncomfortable I'm a little annoyed just going you know one day you know using the heater trying to keep warm and then now I'm turning on the fans and contemplating the air conditioner uh, trying to stay cool <clears throat> spring is supposedly the only time that we get when you know, we get that happy medium where you don't need either the heater or the air conditioning we don't really get fall here basically fall is uh, extend its hot summer and then turns immediately into winter. So if you look at his fur, it's not, not a good angle here, but you see those torn pieces of fur look like yeah, they're getting close to falling off. So I'm not sure how that happens if he just keeps grooming it and then eventually they just kind of fall off or <clears throat> they just shed. <clears throat> or is he doing something to pull him out, getting in more fights maybe? So I haven't seen uh, boots in a while, but yeah, it's been so hot that uh, 
take all the cats around hiding. I didn't see Scruffy all day. <clears throat> so, so anyway, yeah, I'm just feeling annoyed at all sorts of things. You know, everything's every little thing's bugging me right now because I'm in a bad mood. We're depressed or something, and I'm not sure which. But yeah, I feel like uh, I need to be doing something or getting something done. Getting hiss. Okay. <clears throat> so I wasn't sure if he was getting into it or if he was gonna hiss. So I mentioned I was trying to get my uh, trading status with TD Ameritrade activated. So to basically trade options and do margin things, you need to basically qualify yourself. <clears throat> they have to grant you permission because for the most part they they don't want to get sued if you screw up blow up your account and and then try to renege um, so in the worst case yeah basically if I blow up my account and <clears throat> I I argue they should have never let me uh, trade because I didn't know what I was doing, um, they could be on the hook for all my losses. And so they, all the brokerages try to protect themselves from that type of a scenario. So TD Ameritrade, though, they, yeah, they have the most aggressive uh, roadblocks I've seen of any uh, brokerage. So they have an entire options course that apparently they want you to take and then there are quizzes um, in each section so the course is broken up into six parts and so there are six qu uh, quizzes and um, <clears throat> the, um, there are 30 qu questions per quiz so it's uh, 30 times 6 so 180 questions and um, the course itself says like seven hours. Um, so since I've been studying options pretty much nonstop for I don't know how many months now, not quite half a year um, from a professional course and professional coaches. Nothing in the course I think was actually new to me, so I knew I knew it all. So I was just kind of skimming the documents and then trying to get to the test as quickly as possible. Boy, those tests are long. Some of them are shorter than others, but that fifth test, boy, that took me a couple hours. It's all calculator questions. I want you to see, you know, so it's calculator plus graphing. So really slow going and spending multiple minutes per question. I think I spent over, I spent probably over two hours, maybe even three hours on that that test. So um, I was really annoyed just how much time I wasted on that thing. And uh, thanks to the chin rubs today. So <clears throat> I did a whole bunch of uh, quizzes yesterday, but yeah, I only got about halfway through. And so I was trying to finish up the test today, and that uh, fifth test took so long. It was depressing and frustrating because I didn't really want to do it. I was just trying to do it so I could qualify because my initial request for elevated permissions basically was denied 
and it said you need you need to complete the course first. And I'm like, ah, oh, darn it. So I finally completed the course late afternoon today. So basically, I blew up blew up most of yesterday and all today on that stupid thing. And then after I finished, I applied again, and the system automatically rejected me. So I wrote a message to customer service trying to figure out how am I going to get access because this is ridiculous. And if they're not going to grant me access, you know, just use another brokerage. But I wanted to use them because I have been looking at all the different brokerages and um, so I do most of my stuff through Vanguard, but I, I'm mostly a buy and hold type person. I, I actually don't do trading, um, but basically with all the craziness that's been going on this last year, I've decided um, I think I want to try it <clears throat> because I think there may be some opportunities I can exploit. And um, I actually learned there's some very conservative things you can do with options um, to basically generate some extra income. So if you are it's rubbing against my leg. So if you're careful and you do conservative things and you don't care about trying to make double your money or ten times your money or whatever, but you're happy with a, a percent or something like that, you can do very conservative things to generate, you know, you know, fifty dollars here, hundred dollars there. Um, you know, after a while it can have after real money. So, yeah, he's really into it, the petting tonight, but yeah, we're past our time. I think it's time to feed you, but uh, I just seem to be into it. I'm kind of hesitant to stop, but uh, I think I should feed you. But I haven't eaten dinner yet. Okay, Scruffy, how about we get you a food, okay? So it's super supper tonight. So I was tempted to give him the, the other new hearty cut flavor, um, so the chicken and fish, because he hasn't had that before and I was curious how he would like it, but I th think I like the idea of just alternating between the pâtés and the hearty cuts, so he doesn't get bored. And the same thing all the time, get something a little different each time. Because I don't know actually if they taste any different to him. You know, to him it's probably all, eh, it's all food. But you can tell the difference of texture. So, pate versus a hearty cut. You know, you can, even if it doesn't taste uh, even if it tastes the same, you can always tell the texture. So I decided to hold off on the fish tonight and um, give him his uh, super supper this time, and then next time I'll give him the fish and chicken hearty cuts. So I'm going to switch brushes now. So anyway, yeah, I mentioned yeah the trading thing, so I yeah, emailed them, and I guess they'll have to get back to me. So I hope to make it all better, because, yeah, so, yeah, I've been looking at different brokerages, and I've been used to just kind of buy and hold with Vanguard, but uh, I said I want to try trading, and Vanguard is kind of a dinosaur when it comes to its uh, user interface, and uh, trading options and brokerage options and there's a lot of stuff that's kind of hard to do with Vanguard uh, concerning trading which I found out <clears throat> so I liked uh, TD Ameritrade's uh, desktop client I think it's actually a pretty nice client all things considered it's a little complicated but trading is actually kind of complicated so I guess it fits. Um, 
so <clears throat> so I thought maybe I give them a try because I actually have an account with them already. Because long, long, long time ago, um, back before I could afford the Vanguard because their fees were too high, way, way back um, when I was when I had no money, basically, or very little money. Uh, Scott Trade came onto the scene, and it was oh, seven dollars a trade. I can buy uh, stock or an ETF or something for seven dollars. No other hidden fees. There was Vanguard. Uh, at the time, I think you were limited to mutual funds, and then there was a minimum of I forgot. I think it's like it's like three five thousand dollar buy-in for their basic funds. And then they have like a. It's a really obnoxious minimum threshold. It's like fifty thousand dollars or something like that. If you didn't want to get charged annual account maintenance fees, and maintenance fees were something like you know twenty or fifty dollars a year or something like that. And so, <clears throat> you know, Vanguard is kind of annoying that way. Eventually, they start waiving those fees when uh, they start supporting the uh, online mail notif or, yeah, email notifications for things instead of mailing the papers. I guess they said, if you opt into the paperless, we'll waive those fees. But when I was first getting started, they didn't have those options. So, anyway, Scott Trade was uh, not the best option for the time. And, uh, then I stopped using them just because, yeah, I found them a little clunky. And I remember one of the really annoying things uh, back in the day. I don't know if they, I think it was always true. I don't know if they ever fixed it. But if I ever wanted to add money to my account or take money out, I actually had to physically go down to the office and write a check or receive a check. And they didn't have any like electronic bank transfers or other things you could do that you know, basically the rest of the world was doing. And um, my Scott Trade branch was not terribly close and the parking kind of sucked. So I hated going down there. So anyway, they got bought by TD Ameritrade and then I stopped, I just never used the account. So now that they have that kind of nifty desktop client and I'm looking at them, I've also been looking at interactive brokers. <clears throat> um, some people I trust recommend interactive brokers, but uh, the major difference is I already have an account with TD Ameritrade because of the Scott Trade acquisition. So I don't have to go through all the paperwork hurdles and you know, social security number and all that annoying stuff you gotta do every time you open an account and then initially seed it with more money. And Um, I tried the Interactive Brokers desktop client. I don't think it's quite as polished as the, the TD Ameritrade one. Uh, it's okay. Both of them are written, I think, in Java. Um, I'm not a big fan of Java, but I do like those desktop clients a lot more than using a web browser. Uh, the, TD, the Interactive Brokers one looks a little more clunky. Looks like yeah, it's, they're using some Windows compatibility kit or something, and it's stretching out the screen. <laughs> so I think it's Java, so I'm not sure why that is, but they made some really weird design decisions. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. So anyway, a TD Ameritrade doesn't work out. I'm going to interact with brokers. Reading a TD Ameritrade works out, I might still end up in Interactive Brokers. So the other reason I've been looking at IB is because uh, apparently it's easier to buy foreign inter and international stocks. I know they have a better, uh, cheaper margin account uh, rates. So TD Ameritrade is actually really expensive when it comes to margin. I don't actually intend to use margin, but. Um, Somebody I respect said, 
it doesn't hurt to keep it around, keep the option open, because if there is like a really good opportunity, one of those you know, once in a blue moon type opportunities, you might want that margin account. And then I've been buying a lot of foreign things. And then I subscribe to a newsletter. And um, they buy a lot of foreign stocks, some of which may be like over the counter, penny like stocks. And uh, they're hard to get through the normal broker. IB, I've heard, is easier to get that type of stuff from. But uh, it's a little more power user than I'm used to, so I think I have to uh, ramp up, uh, ramp up into that level. For the moment, I think I can deal with it. American depository receipts to buy international stocks that I'm interested in. Call them ADRs. Um, I have been warned if you buy enough of them and you need to buy a bunch or sell a bunch in one sitting because they're thinly tra ADRs are thinly traded you may actually move the market so you got to be careful about buying too many or too little or um, selling too many buying or selling too many at one shot um, I didn't think I had enough money to move the market uh, but this expert was uh, uh, following uh, said actually the margins are or so the volumes are actually pretty thin so it actually doesn't take all of that much to move the market, depending on uh, the stock. Some are uh, more liquid than others. So, like, I think I mentioned uh, some Chinese mega corp, mega mega cap uh, corporations. Uh, I won't be able to move the market on those, even with the ADRs. However, there are some smaller ones that I'm eyeing and. Sounds like I could actually move the market just because they're, they're so illiquid. But that means I gotta open a currency account and then I gotta deal with exchange, you know, exchanging currencies and uh, a lot of stuff I haven't done before, so I gotta learn all that. It's not on my high priority list at the moment. I wanna get through the options stuff first. So I mentioned so one of the conservative things you can do is um, I'm gonna take off my glove and zoom in here. Get this done. It's uh, something called a covered call. So if you already own the stock, you can uh, sell an option on it, where uh, say. Say the price is a hundred right now. Um, you could sell an option to somebody to buy it at uh, say a hundred and five, and they pay money for that option. So their thinking is, if the price goes up to more than a hundred and five, they get a deal because. They get to buy it from me at 105. But if the price doesn't get to 105, it stays below that. I basically get to keep the premium that I earned on that, and I also keep the, uh, the shares. So basically, I get <clears throat> free money. Pretty good deal. Um, now, if um, price goes to 110, then um, I have to sell at 105, so I lose out, but I still get to keep the premium, so it's not a complete loss, and the fact is, you know, I started at 100, so, so I didn't get all the gain of 110, but I still got a gain of 105, so it's still not a bad deal, and then it's really good if you want to actually sell out of position, so if you're going to sell it anyway, why not get paid a little extra money to sell? And so, um, 
my dad owns a couple things that I don't want to keep. So <clears throat> I realized I could actually uh, sell cover calls on these things and basically try to earn some extra money on these things I was going to sell anyway. So, so that's actually how I got started with uh, options. I didn't realize you could do that until I uncovered an article that, yeah, you can do this. And then the flip side of it is I wanted to buy into some things. And I found out you can actually get paid to buy into some things you're going to buy anyway. So if I say what, I want to buy a stock at 60, but it's uh, currently 70. It's like, yeah, 70 is maybe a little too expensive for me. 60 I've, I've decided is a pretty good price. So I can uh, sell an option and somebody will pay me money to buy it at 60. So it's basically insurance for them. So if price crashes, say in 50, I get to buy it at 60. But if it doesn't go down, I get free money. And then if it goes down to like right around 60, 59 or something, I get to buy it pretty much you know, if I was going to buy it anyway. So if I bought it, you know, or 59, 60, whatever. So basically I'm buying it like I was, except now I'm getting paid on top of it to buy it. So I'm just going to make the money for something I was going to do anyway. So, uh, yeah. I think it's going to go down the alley. So, maybe not. It's indecisive tonight. So he might be going out the other way. I'll off the deck where I can't see him. I think he went off the deck. Okay, folks, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.